I remember my first day as a new teacher. We were doing all of these different activities where we would go to a different room as a group and a certain group leader or administrator would have something for us to either do or discuss to get us acclimated to the school's culture. In one particular room, I recall the assistant principal discussing how their population of students lack motivation to learn and they were always welcoming ideas to find a solution to this problem. Having this tip of information about the students, I wonder if they lack motivation or discipline or both. In today's episode, we will discuss the topics of motivation and discipline. Now we all have heard these topics before, but let's look at them from a different perspective. To begin with, motivation and discipline are related and complementary to one another. That is, they add value to each other. You need both of these to act upon your goals, to stay consistent, and to keep going even when you feel like giving up. According to Vocabulary.com, motivation is defined as the reason, motive, or purpose for behavior. Whereas discipline is described as a system of rules of conduct. Now let's compare and contrast these two concepts by looking at them more deeply. On one hand, motivation consists of motive, inspiration, reason, purpose, and commitment. You can think of motivation as your why. Why are you interested in this particular goal or idea? Why should you pursue this particular goal or idea? But on the other hand, discipline consists of plans, rules, routine, systems, and effort. You know, all the fun stuff. You can think of this as your how. How are you going to pursue this goal? How will you get from initiation to execution? As you can see, you need both motivation and discipline because you need a reason and a plan to begin. One shouldn't exist without the other. Write down this equation. Why plus how equals results. If you know your why and how, your vision will be more clear and you'll think twice about throwing in a towel when things become more difficult because they will get difficult. No matter what dream you're chasing, no matter what you're trying to do in life, everything is hard. Nothing is easy. It's just the rule of the game. And if anybody tells you it's easy, they're not being honest. You will remember why you started in the first place. That's why you need your why, your motive your motivation, because you will always have that in the back of your mind. When you, you know, chasing after your dreams and it just seems like nothing is working and you're ready to like, just say, you know what, just forget this. I'm just going to just continue to just work my nine to five and, or maybe you are trying to lose weight. Maybe I'll just stay, you know, this size because this is just too hard. Remember why you started. What was your reason for starting? What was your motive? What was your motivation? And keep that in the back of your mind. And always go back to that because you're going to need that. And you can use your why to keep you motivated. But you also need your how to keep you consistent, right? So your motivation is kind of like, all right, I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to start this. I'm going to initiate this activity. But your how, your discipline will keep you consistent will give you the results you really are seeking. So if you always keep your why in the back of your mind, even if your how may not be working, you can always modify your how. Maybe your routine is needs to get become more modified. Maybe you need to modify your routine, right? Maybe you need to wake up an hour earlier. Or maybe you need to modify your plan or your course of action. Whatever it, it is, one thing about your how, you can kind of tweak that a little bit. But your why usually is pretty much the same. Like, my whole motive behind becoming a teacher is because I want to inspire the next generation. I want to inspire students to actually look at education in a different light because a lot of them aren't motivated, they have no desire to learn. You know, some of it is instinctual, some of it is learned. And so 
you know, is it hard? Oh, it's very hard. But my why is still the same. I'm still there. I'm still fighting every day, fighting a good fight because I remember my why. That I too was that child before. I was always motivated, but I was in the same predicament as some of the children I work with are in. You know, I work in a Title I school, so I was that little girl who didn't have a lot financially, um, had a pretty dysfunctional household. And so, you know, I looked up to my teachers. My teachers were like my heroes, you know. Um, they were like a, in school in general, was like my escape, you know. It, it really was my safe haven. And that's what school is. That's what school is nowadays for a lot of children. You know, it's still the same case for them. And so I always remember my why. And this my my how changes all the time. Like, you know, some days I'm like, okay, um, you know, maybe I can do this and maybe this will get them, you know, more pumped and ready to learn. Or, you know, maybe I need to, you know, uh, study more or read more books or watch more seminars. You know, I'm always trying to figure out different, you know, courses of actions and systems um, and putting in a lot of effort to get my students more motivated and inspired to learn. But that's my how. You see how it's always changing? But my why never changes. My motive has never changed. My whole reason of being in that classroom is because I, I, I feel as though, like I said, I want to inspire them, but I also feel as though it's my duty to give back, you know? Like, kind of like the whole... Um, you know, um, I forget the term, but like, you know, when you're like somewhere and someone, the pay it forward, the whole pay it forward thing. Um, and sometimes I kind of like, as smart as I am, as intellectual as I am, I forget things because I'm just human, right? We're human. So anyways, as you know, I feel like I'm paying it forward, you know, with those students, you know, just as my teachers, you know, did for me, I'm doing for them, you know, I'm putting in my awe and that's what keeps me going as well. And so that's my why though. Like I said, that doesn't change. That is kind of like instinctual. That is something that I was just meant to do, but my how has changed, you know, and it's only been a couple of years of me teaching and it's going to continue to change, you know, as long as I'm in the classroom. And so that is how you can look at motivation and discipline. You can look at the motivation as your reason why did I even start this in the first place? Why do I even care? Why am I even putting in all this time to even accomplish this goal? And then your how, you go ahead and you come up with that. You know, you write out a plan. You know, um, I'm very big on uh, documenting things. And I love my note section on my phone. I don't know if you do, but I love the note section. Like my note section is full of notes. Even when I was buying my house, I was writing down all the house addresses and putting what I like, what I didn't like, putting prayers in there. You know, I write all my prayers in my um, my note section. It's just, you know, it's very of my cell phone. But I also do a lot of documenting on paper. I type up a lot of stuff, you know, on my uh, computer. And so I'm always modifying my plan, right? Um, like if I was to talk about my business, which I don't really want to get into until later, but I've modified that so much. Like I started one way and it's totally different now, but my why still hasn't changed for my business. Like the reason I started it hasn't changed. I've modified my business model, but I haven't, the reason that I begin never changed. And that's why you need both motivation and discipline. Like, you know, a lot of a lot of other motivational speakers and life coaches, they'll say, you know, Forget motivation. Just worry about discipline. It's like, no, don't forget about motivation. See, a lot of people don't know what motivation really means. But I just explained to you, it's your why in life. And your how is your discipline. That's the discipline part of it. So you need to, your why plus your how equals results. Or motivation plus discipline equals results. So then... I want to go more into my business. Like I said, I want to get get into that later. Well, now it's later. So my business has been very, very, um, it's been like a love-hate relationship, a bittersweet relationship with my business. Like I absolutely adore it. I absolutely love it. But some days I'm just like, you know what? 
I'm ready to throw in the towel. I'm just like, you know what? This is just not going to work. Like, I am investing way too much of my own money into this endeavor. And I'm not seeing any results, really. You know, and I, like I said, my why hasn't really changed. But my how has changed multiple times. I've literally modified my business, I don't know how many times. You know, I've invested in different programs and software. You know, I'm, I'm even in the process of updating a website and and I'm still not seeing what I necessarily want to see but it doesn't mean I never will right but if I give up how would I ever know and so that's why I'm not going to give up I'm going to keep going because my why has not changed like despite the fact that yes I've had to modify my how multiple times my why my motive behind this whole business hasn't changed and so despite all the difficulties I face, I'm going to keep pursuing my dream because one, this business that I'm starting, this company that I'm trying to start, it's bigger than me. My purpose is bigger than any issue I'm facing. And I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, that's, and that's also part of the whole, um, how you need to keep reminding yourself, you know, keep recalling the little bit of you know, like accomplishments you had with whatever it is your goal is, right? Because I've had some accomplishments. Don't think I've been like not successful at all. I'm just not where I would like to be, right? But I have had some success. And so, you know, I always recall and go back to that. You know, I, I talk to friends, you know, um, I talk to family members and I say, you know, am I wasting my time? Should I just give up on this? You know, and then they, there's sometimes my voice of reason. Um, because you, sometimes you need someone else's voice besides your own, because sometimes your voice can be negative. Also, I talk to God, I pray and I ask him to show me if this is what you still want me to do. Am I even supposed to be doing this? You know? And so, like I said, my why keeps me going. It keeps me fighting for my business because in the almost, I think it'll be two years in November. It'll be two years in November, um, my two-year anniversary of my business. I probably want to give up maybe about at least 20, 30 times by now. Like, I've even wrote journals in my phone where I'm like, you know what? Today, I just was like, the business just has to go. I just can't do it anymore. I'm done. I give up. But then something just keeps me going. And I believe that's my why. Like, that why, because it's innate. It is instinctual. It's inside of me. It's not going anywhere. And if I give up, I'm always going to regret it. And it's always going to be something in the back of my mind. Like my subconscious just eating me alive. Like, you should have did it. You should have did it. And so that motive keeps me going. That's why I say you still do need your motivation. You know, don't give up on motivation. Like, have that in your toolbox as well as your how. Couple them together. You need them both. Because they give each other value. They're complementary. They're like um, peanut butter and jelly. They just make sense on a sandwich, right? <laughs> Motivation and discipline, they just make sense. So they give each other value. And one thing we know about valuable things, they're worth all the problems, chaos, and uncertainties that we have to face when chasing after those valuable things. Like I said, my why is still the same, but I have modified and changed my how on numerous occasions because as I grow and learn, I find better ways to plan and execute my vision for my company. And that is another reason why your how will change because you will change. So it will change. But usually your motive, the reason why you started something, your motivation behind what you started no matter how much you learn and grow, that usually doesn't change. That might get a little bit better, but it doesn't usually change. So although you need both motivation and discipline, I would still argue that discipline does trump motivation. Like keep motivation, right? Keep it in the back of your mind. But you got to remember motivation comes in spurts and it's sporadic. We get motivated by something we see or hear, right? Motivation give us those warm, fuzzy feelings, but unfortunately, it will not carry a goal all the way through. On the contrary, discipline is monotonous, uncomfortable, and requires much effort, which isn't always thrilling. 
However, the routines, good habits, and hard work will lead to success as you will not rely solely on bouts of inspiration, but you will use a more systematic approach to make your dreams a reality. Here's another equation. Motivation plus hard work equals results. The reason people are often having difficult times, you know, a difficult time acquiring true success is their lack of discipline, right? They have the motivation, but they just have no discipline. And then some people have neither one. They want to be successful, but they don't want to put in the effort. They want to lose weight, but they don't want to exercise. They aspire to be a doctor, but they refuse to study hard. They have the desire, but not the dedication. It's like you can't want these things and not put in the work. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Um, The equation doesn't say motivation equals results. It says motivation plus hard work equals results. So it's like you can want all you want. But if you don't put in the hard work, you'll never get the results you're looking for. And I think part of that... You know, part of a problem that I noticed, you know, um, with social media and I am, I'm not against social media, you know, it's not my cup of tea personally. I'm not real active on there, but one thing I'm noticing with the different social media sites is, you know, people are saying they're so tired. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to do anything. They just want to exist, you know, and, and I, I always have a problem with that, you know, um, and maybe I'm wrong, you know, but. I don't agree with it. I I feel as though you need to work. You know, you need to work. You need to do something worthwhile that we were not put here to just sit around and do nothing. Um, and then an idle mind is a devil's playground. Like, you do not want to be inactive. You don't want to sit around. Like, I've had moments in life where I literally just sat around and was able to just do nothing, you know, um, because I was financially okay at the time and I didn't have to necessarily work. And I was one bored out of my mind, like completely bored because I had to realize like I still wanted more. I wanted to do something. I wanted to feel like I was needed, you know, out in the world. And so I think maybe the people who feel that way, they just haven't found what they really, really are passionate about. And um, until you find what you're really passionate about, you will have that type of attitude like, oh, I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything. But I found what I truly love to do, and that's to teach. I love to teach. I love to inspire. I love to motivate people. Like, I'm always motivating others, you know, not just my students. I motivate people out in the street. You know, I would just stop someone and talk to them. You know, my family members, you know, and I'm pretty sure I get on their last nerves because I'm always motivating people to want more, and I'm always seeing their potential. Um, And so I think that may be part of why people feel that way because they haven't really truly found what they really are passionate about about and their true purpose and mission on this earth, because we all have a a mission, you know, like I, like I said, um, if you read on my uh, podcast biography, I explain, I was totally against starting a podcast. Like I had no interest in it at all. I'm like, I don't want my voice all over the world. I don't want to be nowhere near famous. You know, that is just not my cup of tea, but I had more than one person tell me that I needed to speak. I needed to talk. I needed to you know, use my voice. And God also spoke that with me. And one thing I don't do now as a believer, and I've always been a believer for the most part, but I'm more, my relationship with Christ has grown a lot. And with my relationship growing so much, I don't believe in wrestling with God's wishes, right? Um, You know, and I'll talk more about God later, but God created us for him, not the other way around. He's a creator with a creation. And so when he asks you to do something, you should just oblige. You should just obey, right? And if you don't and you want to wrestle with him, it's not going to end pretty. And you'll still end up doing what he asks you to do anyways. And so that's part of the reason why I just stopped, like, giving in. I'm like, whatever, if you want me to speak, I'll just speak. You know, like I said, this isn't my cup of tea. I'm not interested in this, but this is what God sees for my life. This is one of the missions I have on this earth is to use my voice. And that is what I'm doing. And that is my motive. Now, the discipline part is me, you know, making scripts and writing down topics and going back into my experiences and recalling facts and information, 
you know, and that's not the, that's the not so fun part because one, like I said, I don't really want to do this. And so I have to get up and make myself do this, you know? And so, but I couple them together and I do believe I will get results from this. And I'm hoping my results are, I can help someone who needs it to keep going because life is hard. It's always going to be hard. It's never going to be just sunshine and roses. You know, there's got to be rain sometimes. You know, we have to deal with pain to find our purpose in life. We have to know sadness to know happiness. It just is what it is. It's nothing you can do about it. They're polar opposites. It's just life. Good, evil, happy, sad. It's just the reality of it, right? So I kind of got off on a tangent and I might do that sometimes. But to sum up our whole motivation and discipline, as I say, stated before, they complement one another. So you need to consider both when you're starting your goals. You need to know your why so you can begin. But you need to know your how so you can finish. The why may be easier because it is innate for the most of us. But the how is just as important. I would suggest writing down your goals and next to each, write down your why and your how. Why are you after that goal? And how will you obtain that goal? Then you should come up with a detailed plan to begin executing these goals. I would also limit my interaction and focus on things that clash with these goals. Whatever that may be. Maybe it's your phone. Maybe it's negative people that you're around. But you need to limit that as much as possible so you can go after your goals. Sometimes it's better to be isolated for a little while. I know it's not always ideal, but sometimes you need to do things alone. Just you and God. I'll leave you with this. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, it reads, We don't enjoy discipline when we get it. It is painful. But later, after we have learned our lesson from it, we enjoy the peace that comes from what is doing right. Discipline is equivalent to peace. You want peace? You got to be disciplined.